Good Saturday morning to you, Roger Hill, Weathering Heights. This weather video is driven by 802cars.com, representing 802 Toyota, Twin City, Subaru, 802 Honda. They're all located off of Exit 7 on Interstate 89. Here's our big girl here, Irma. And uh, Irma's been skirting the coast. It's losing its uh, eye uh, currently and with a little bit of weakening due to some of the interaction of the mountainous terrain of Cuba. However, it's going to be going through the Florida Straits, and the latest track has uh, shifted a little bit to the west and uh, more of a line here that's going to take it up the coast and then inland. We're still going to get raked across uh, portions of eastern Florida with some inflow along the eastern side. But with this western shift, it looks like uh, the worst areas are probably going to be the Florida Keys. Right now, Irma's a uh, Category 3, I believe, or a 4, uh, right on the line there. And uh, it is expected to power up some as it goes over some pretty warm water. 8 o'clock this morning, National Hurricane Center track of Irma. Uh, we were looking at basically major hurricane category 3 or higher continuing right up the west coast of Florida and it's expected to increase its intensity as it tracks through the Florida states where the water temperatures are warmer and uh, make a landfall. Now Florida Keys you're under the gun uh, but still parts of the Bahamas all the way up the east coast of Florida still under the gun. The track of the hurricane though is a little more centered to the west with a little bit of this shift now and it looks like uh, this is going to extend more problematic conditions as you go up the western side of Florida and continuing. It looks like we'll be at tropical storm status once we get into Georgia, passing a little bit north and west of Atlanta, and then uh, dying a death here and raining herself out over portions of the uh, Tennessee Valley and the mountains of the southern Appalachians. And this is the GOES floater visible imagery loop. And we can see Irma right here with her eye and then a little bit of a weakening loss of the eye. But uh, we're expecting this to change, especially as she powers up. These temperatures here are 31 degrees Celsius. They're close to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And these 90 degree water bathtub temperatures are just going to interact. As this is what hurricanes work off is latent heat. So this is going to power her up a little bit more uh, after weakening her through the mountains of Cuba, especially the higher mountains across portions of southeastern Cuba. The other thing to note is uh, the circular nature of the buzzsaw look here where it's, she's very symmetrical. A little bit of dry air entrainment you can see here, but uh, really not that significant. But this is part of that weakening process. We also have a hurricane recon uh, that just uh, looks like uh, had been moving through Irma to help with the uh, 8 a.m. update this morning. And a uh, political thing to note is that, no, they're not flying over Cuba. And you can see here the uh, National Hurricane Center track once again. Coming ashore, the prediction is uh, around a Category 4, potentially even going up to a 5, and then down to a 4, and interacting with the uh, peninsula down to a 1, northern parts of Florida, and uh, continuing northwest bound, dying a death. Far cry different conditions for us, though. Uh, we have a sprawling area of strong high pressure. And uh, it's located north of the Great Lakes or over the Great Lakes right now. You can see Irma down here. This is the deep tropical humidity, all suppressed by this puppy here. Big, sprawling area of higher pressure. This is going to give us some excellent weather, really starting tomorrow, Sunday. And lingering, it looks like, maybe, maybe even all the way through the entire week next week. We may actually get seven days after today's little showers. Seven days of dry weather, potentially? That's a possibility now. Okay, running the uh, six hourly uh, European, you can see Irma down uh, making a run up the west coast of Florida and sprawling area of higher pressure located over the northeast U.S. Irma then makes that track to the north and west by the European model. And uh, this is valid about uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Tuesday this week. Note this uh, sprawling area of higher pressure holding its ground and keeping Irma basically at bay. And eventually things relent. And we get that sort of vorticity shear with a few showers into the uh, southeastern Great Lakes, parts of New York. Let's watch that again. And uh, eventually, we get basically just some high and mid-level clouds, but also from another weather system cutting across from uh, east of Hudson Bay through parts of Quebec. And some pretty cold temperatures there as the thicknesses uh, really are reduced up to the north. But look at this. Dry weather. This is Friday next week. Another area of higher pressure, 1024 millibar, fairly significant. Out over here, this is uh, Jose, which is doing loop-de-loops. 
kind of waiting her turn, almost like in a uh, holding pattern. And uh, then she gets the green light and comes up the eastern seaboard, but off the coast. And that's a significant movement. This is 10 days out. Look at off of Hatteras between Bermuda and Cape Hatteras going wide right. Looks like this frontal system up here, this trough of low pressure, will probably nudge her out to sea with no harm for the northeast United States. Again, this is day 10. Roger Hill, Weathering Heights.